can I quit with a winning result a vast majority of the time while controlling my drawdown with efficient trading? In other words, can you hit your goals like with the first trade of the day, a large percent of the, of the time or within five or six trades tops within an hour? What's up everyone, today we're sitting down with Troy Noonan, talk about Egypt Express and trading, over 30 years of experience, started trading back in the day on paper charts. He's the guy behind a website, Backpack Trader, who's really focused on trading for freedom, having more time, kind of trading more hands-off, mechanical systems. So Troy, welcome to the podcast, good day to be here today. How's it going? Thanks for having me. All right, so before we start, talk a little bit more about kind of who you are and kind of what you're doing these days. Yeah, so um, I just got back from Asia. I'm still kind of going through the jet lag. <laughs> Um, my first time there, it was kind of interesting because, uh, it was a 12 hour time difference from the, from the East coast. And I like to trade crude oil. So instead of having to get up when it's still nighttime here, like 5am on the West coast where I live to make that eight thirty nine o'clock call time in the morning for crude oil, I was able to trade at 9pm. And it, it's just a completely different f feeling in life in general to trade at night versus in the day when you're day trading. So that was interesting. Got to eat some dinner, go place a few trades and go out and party in crazy town in uh, Patong, Thailand, south of Phuket. So it was very interesting, a lot of fun. Yeah, tell me a bit more about kind of how did you go to trading in the first place? What was your first kind of moment with trading? Yeah, so back... It was before the internet. Back in the early 90s, I'm going to say 1990, 91, I started learning how to trade because I received a brochure in the mail. And uh, it it showed a head and shoulders pattern. And of course, my first thought being, what's shampoo got to do with trading? But what I learned at that time was that there are certain price patterns that uh, exist in nature, in the markets, human nature, and they repeat over and over and over. And if you learn what those patterns are, you can predict what's likely to happen next. Of course, it's never a guarantee, but if you know what's likely to happen next, you can uh, predict when these patterns happen what a good trade would be because you know what's going to likely happen next. And if you get the odds right, then it's just a numbers game. And so I learned that early on, and, and I just unwittingly happened upon a trade that went down in history infamously as the trade that broke the Bank of England. I, I didn't break the Bank of England. Someone else did. You probably know who. Uh, but, of course, he made billions. I took my several grand that I made as a young fledgling trader and backpacked through Europe for several months. And I played drums. So along the way, I was uh, picked up a set of bongos and was sitting in the street musicians all over Europe. I would go in and play for free beer in Italy with a Venezuelan musician that I met. And about a year later, I went to visit him in Caracas, Venezuela, and within 24 hours, I met the woman that I've now been married to for over 28 years. So I say George Soros made billions. I made a wife and two kids. I'll let you decide who got the best end of that trade. But that started my trading career. And I always tell that story. Um, and of course, it's about me, but it's really not about me. It's about you and everyone else who wants to trade because of what trading can do for you in your life. And the level of freedom that I experienced I mean, it changed my life. I, I'll never give it back. And um, trading is just too darn important to get wrong, you know? And that's, that's something I learned early on. So, I mean, it, that was way back when I was getting paper charts, filling in the charts by hand from the closing prices in the Wall Street Journal. And uh, that's what I made that trade with. That was, that's what it was like in those days. What happened after that, that first kind of good trade that you had? Was it like easy to get back on track and keep trading well? Or did you have any issues with like keeping up the momentum or that kind of stuff? Yeah, good question. Uh, no one's ever asked me that before. It took some time. I mean, when I got back from Europe, I had to kind of recollect. I had a, a real busy business and it was in the hands of a good manager, but I was gone for a long time. And so I, it, I didn't start trading again for, for a while, but... Um, I started seeking answers. What happened was I had a second round of, uh, I mean, that was maybe the birth of the backpack trader, I guess, because that's how I became a trader through that backpacking that happened from that trade. But anyway, when the internet cafes started popping up um, all around Western Europe was right during the, um, the heyday of the dot-com boom. And that's when I really dove back into trading hard, like more so than 
just prior to that anyway. I mean, that's when I really started. Everybody was in those days. But I, I went on another backpacking trip through Europe, popping in and out of the internet cafes, uh, and I'd go into a town, jump online, play some trades. And in those days, I thought I was like killing it because I was making money no matter what. But what I didn't realize at the time was that anyone could make money. All you had to do was buy anything and you were going to make money in those days. And then the dot-com bust came. And so, you know, I learned another type of tough lesson as a trader. Luckily, I didn't give it all back. I was able to hold on to a bunch of it, but I did give more back than I cared to remember now. Um, but it got me uh, thinking that I had a lot more to learn. So I started looking for answers. And the internet had just kind of was kicking in and becoming a part of our lives, you know, that and cell phones. And so I uh, actually started sitting in on webinars, just like people do today. And I happened upon uh, something that really opened my eyes. And it was um, this guy had created the, the set of indicators that uh, really, it provided structure, it provided uh, a plan, it provided a mechanical set of rules, looking for those patterns that were the, you know, the likelihood was in your favor, you had the odds in your favor. And so that was another big pivotal point for me. And so I bought this strategy, I learned it really well, and I started interacting with uh, a lot of their members on one of their forums. One day I got a call out of the blue from the owner and he said, you know, we're growing as a company. We've been kind of, we have our, had our radar up and we're looking for someone to recruit into the company as our first trading coach. And we think you'd be great at it. So you want a job? <laughs> and I often think what would have happened if I didn't take that call. Um, but I did and I joined them. And within 30 days, I was the host of a live trade room, which I'd never done before. It was over close to 20 years ago. I started calling a live trade room and, uh, that's when everything really started to take hold for me. Because when you see things over and over and over and over, and when you have the pressure of having to call live trades with an audience that is depending on you and you're hanging on your every word, really, there's a, it's an awesome responsibility. And uh, I almost blew it on the first trade. I almost didn't call it because it felt so uncomfortable and it just didn't seem right. And then these four magic words popped in my head. And these are the words that I say change my life lean on the system. And I don't know where those words came from, but it changed everything for me because at that point in time, I knew I had to call this, this trade because if not, I'd be an idiot, whether if it, if it won and I didn't call it. And if it did, if it lost, I could just blame it on the system. It's not my fault. I'm just being a professional. So it was really to take the pressure off myself. Um, but it changed everything because uh, all you have to do if, you're, if you want to succeed with trading is lean on the system. It, you have to have a system, of course, but you have to believe in the system. There are steps that you need to do to acquire it, believe it, be able to trade it. But once you have it, you take the pressure off yourself and you let your system do the heavy lifting for you combined with good money management and power of compounding. That's a very good point, by the way. And the other thing is going from a live room to where you have freedom from trading is like two different things because a live room is like one wall, like every day, every day, like call trades. How did that move to like having freedom from trading and kind of having a lifestyle? Yeah, so that well, I can call a live trade room from anywhere if I have an internet connection. Um, so I and I did. I traveled quite a bit. Um, I stopped doing the trade room a couple years ago. I figure after 18 years, I kind of paid my dues and just got tired of getting up that early. Now I do it um, selectively with a small group. I do it um, to test new trading ideas and stuff and to help other traders. Um, I just, I trade for myself mostly, but um, I am going to be in a, doing a trade room next month, actually, out of New York uh, for a week because of a new strategy that I'm helping with, working with some, some people. But um, it's a difference, you know, be, doing a trade room is a job. Trading should be a business. I mean, really doing a trade room could be a business too. It just depends on if, what, how you look at it. Um, but you have to, you know, with trading, one thing, there's, there's things that are in common. I mean, having, calling live trades is uh, an exercise in discipline, right? You got to be disciplined. You've got to be able to show up every day, just like with a trade plan. You have a trade plan that says start trading crude oil futures at 8.50 a.m. New York time. You got to show up and do it. It doesn't matter 
where you are. I mean, if, 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 because if you miss days and if you do it randomly and some days you don't do it and some days you do, you're not going to get the results that your system has proven you're going to get. It becomes too, uh, just too random. It, it, all of a sudden, you're, it's lady luck now is a, a, plays a bigger role. You can't really test for that and prove that, right, from my, from my point of view. So there's not a big difference. The trade room is just talking to people while you do it, basically. The transition is, was pretty easy. Did you move to higher tower frames for your trades when you kind of want to have more freedom, or was it still like a kind of intraday type of trading? Yeah, so, yeah, swing trading for sure. So if, if, during the times when I haven't day traded, I haven't day traded every single day for the last 20 years, but it's kind of, I do it when I'm in that groove of doing it. Um, swing trading, though, is something that you could do all the time because I, use, I like to use daily end-of-day charts, daily charts. You only get one bar a day, and you pretty much can check your charts when it's convenient. You could place your trades. You could work your orders because oftentimes it can be multiple days where you're at that entry level where you can get into a trade. It really takes the pressure off. I, I, I often tell my, my members that you literally can spend a few minutes a week on average if you do it right. I mean, you have to spend time creating the plan, but once it's created... Some some days you have nothing to do. Other days you have you're you're active. But when it all averages out, fifteen thirty minutes a week, you can be pretty robust um, with a good trade plan. I like to trade options using the underlying stock patterns. So when the stock hits a certain price, I'm using that to signal an option trade to buy or sell. Simple directional trades. That's it. I keep it really easy. And like this, you can get double and triple percentage gains on your trades. Um, sure, you're going to lose some, but you win more. And that's all it takes to have a winning, prof profitable trading business. Interesting. Now, people are going to want to ask for sure what kind of uh, setups or what kind of things to trade. If you want to share a screen, go through that. That could be cool. All right. So I'll show you a, a swing trade first. This is with a strategy I call the catapult trader. I'm actually doing intensive training on it. Uh, even as we speak, the next session is this Saturday. So it, it has, it's a very simple strategy. It's based on momentum. It uses a, an old indicator that's uh, a, some math that's been in existence for hundreds of years. I, I often tell the, the, the legend that ancient Asian feudal rice merchants used it with their abacus when they were trading rice on the docks uh, hundreds of years ago. And the math still is good today. It still works because it measures the balance of power between buyers and sellers. So it's very unique, but I use it in a, in a different way. I use it to indicate a shift in momentum with some corroboration with price action. And so it's really simple. Um, we don't need this purple line. When, when uh, the fast line crosses over the slow line, it changes color, and then you need a bar in the, in the direction and it gives you a setup and the setup prints on the chart. The little plus sign is your entry. You got targets below, you got to stop above. This trade has been going for quite some time, and this illustrates my point. This is the XLE. It's the energy ETF. Um, it, it just wins a lot with this particular strategy. Um, and so when you click on the bar, you get the whole trade in the, in, the tra in the data window here. It tells you where to get in, where to get out. Everything's defined for you, which is what I like when I'm trading. There's no guessing. It's like the whole trade is planned before it's even taken. I know what it's going to do from start to finish. So... Now I have something I can test and prove. Like, what did this do over the last 10 years, right? Before I even add it to my roster. So on the right edge of the chart, for example, it shows up like this. There, that's what trading looks like. You don't have the benefit of hindsight, right? You got to trade into the future of what you don't know is going to happen next, right? That's trading. So, but, but what you do know is that some concepts I utilize that I learned very young, I feel lucky that I learned this, that the immediate past predicts the immediate future. And that's that whole thing of identifying a pattern where you know what the likelihood is going to probably going to be. And so something occurred here that it just immediately happened and is giving you what's going to happen next with a high level of probability. And what that is are the targets. So if the trade just comes down and hits the entry, then the targets have a high likelihood of being hit. High percentage, right? The immediate past predicts the immediate future. And so I keep it really simple. So if, if this trade pops up like this and I have an entry at 83, I'm going to be looking to buy uh, in the money puts 
but with a lot of time, I usually go maybe three to five times the average hold time just so I have room and I could catch the big runner. The reason why this is called catapult trader is because the trades often feel like they've been flung from a catapult um, where the, you hit the targets, but then they keep on going. I'll show you an example of that with a, today's uh, crude oil trade. But um, anyway, the point is, is that uh, you don't know what's going to happen next when you place a trade, and that's what gives traders problems. And then once they're in the trade, they try to influence the outcome, which is kind of silly. You can't do that. But you can. You can't control what the, trade, what the price is going to do, but you can control how you trade that price, and that's where the trade plans come in. And so um, the whole idea of this only taking a few minutes a week is because when that trade set up on October 27th, how many days do you have a chance to get into that trade? I mean, this trade might end up losing, but even right today, you could have gotten into the trade three months later. So this trade's been going for a while. Some trades happen really fast. This one's taking its time. Uh, but what I love about it is when you open up the performance report, these are the numbers I always look at when I'm... This is just based on a single share of stock, by the way, with a few different positions, but one share. Because I don't care about that. I'm really... I'm going to trade the options. But um, it's got a real high profit factor, which I'm looking for. It's got a really high average net profit per share. So every time you place a trade... It averages $5.82 a profit. This is all based on historic back testing and using the, uh, the automation. So it's not perfect. You have to work around gaps and it won't exactly be this, but I don't care. I'm just using this as a big roadmap to create my plan, right? Um, interesting, uh, it, it hasn't lost very much. I mean, I don't know if it's even lost anything. I think it had one loss in there. But when you, this is unusual. You don't usually see equity curves that go straight up. Usually you're going to see things that are, you know, they go up, they go down, they go up, they, you know what I mean? They stair step. This one just hasn't really lost much with this, with this plan. It's, it's, a, it's a unicorn. Um, doesn't mean this trade won't lose. But like if I take the same approach or same strategy and we look at Apple, that's always a good one. Uh, you could see it's still a really attractive looking equity curve, but you could also see some drawdown and it overcomes the drawdown, make it new all-time highs as of three days ago, four days ago. And, you know, this doesn't quite have the same numbers as the other one, but still really good. This is what type of stuff I look for. And, and so a, a stock plan, a trade plan like this, has to earn its way onto my trading roster. Like, I go through a lot of testing and really let the cream rise before I start, you know, putting it on my roster. So um, even when trades lose, since, since we're not holding options to expiration, we're trading the price uh, fluctuation in the option itself as the stock goes up, the value of the option goes up, etc. We're not holding the option ex expiration. So even if it stops out and loses, we're able to sell the option back and recover some of the premium. It really goes to the bottom line in that risk-reward ratio. So... I don't know if I have one of these marked up that actually show the um, a trade with percentages on it, but you can just see visually, if I make it bigger, that this target was the immediate future that was predicted by the immediate past, right? So it sets up on the right here. You got the setup. And then you got the target that's perfectly tuned. Like these, these are adjusted, like some trades are bigger than others because my strategies know how to tune themselves to market conditions. They adjust, they dance with the market, I always say, and that's why these plans continue to work. They're evergreen. They, like, like I have strategies from 12 plus years ago that work just as well today as when I first created them because of they're utilizing the concepts that allow the plan to con contract and expand and, and dance with market volatility bar after bar after bar. So all those are important components to my style of trading and what I teach in my mastermind. Yeah, I mean, th this is really cool. So I'm getting you really based on data a lot here, which is definitely something most traders don't do or, or, when they're losing money. So basing yourself on data and like a lot of backtests and everything around, uh, this is a good thing. But also you got these indicators and that you've 
cool to yourself that kind of help you not make mistakes. Like you know exactly what to do, you don't have second guess yourself on the chart. Like a lot of people go on the chart, they kind of see a setup, but they're not sure if they should take it or not. They kind of second guess, kind of try to think about it for a while, and then this will work for them. So uh, I think that's a, definitely a better way to do it. And it might have even been a good trade that just didn't win. So people get confused because they, it, the trade lost, it's a bad trade. Well, not necessarily. It might have been a trade where you have like a 70 plus percent percentage of winning. The other 30 plus 30, 25, whatever percent loses. That's a good trade. You just have to take enough of them so that the numbers work in your favor. Power of numbers. It's one of my 12 powers to successful trading. I have an ebook that I give away. In fact, you can offer it to your listeners if you want. I'd be happy to, to give that as a free gift to anyone listening to this. Uh, 12 Powers of Successful Trading. has got some good stuff in it, this type of stuff. Um, a couple things I'll point out. You give me too much credit. I didn't code any of this. I work with a programmer that I've worked with for many years who takes my ideas and is able to interpret them in you know my crazy way of explaining it, but he's able to put it into code and create these indicators for me. So Luckily, we've worked a lot together, and he knows kind of how I express myself. Um, this also uses an interesting thing I call spotlight technology. And when you get into a long trade, all the bars turn green. You notice the color is kind of unique, right? And it always the bright color goes in the direction of the trade. So the dark green are ones with bars that close down, but it, they're still green because you're still in the long trade, right? When you're short, the bars turn red. And when you're flat, the bars are gray. And so you get used to the colors. The light gray is down, the dark gray is up. But it makes it really easy psychologically to stay in the trade when it's going against you. You're like, oh, no, don't panic. The, but the, the color is still green. You have nothing to do. Just stay long. So that helps. It really does. And then also, um, when you're looking back, it's easy to spot and count and test and find the trades really fast. So, you know, back testing is that... Um, the type of work that is needed to succeed as part of the proving process that you could prove your plan will make you money before you risk your money. <laughs> There's a concept. Most people don't do it. But with, when, with a tool like this, it makes it easier because, you know, we, we're busy. We got to economize our time. And so having tools that help you prove your strategy is going to make you money is that's worth a lot. Just, just that alone, being able to do that. So uh, let me show you day trade. So this is a brand new strategy. I haven't released it yet. It's coming up. I'm probably within the next month or two, it's going to be ready. Uh, this is like a, a prototype. Um, it's using a, a custom Renko chart, which is really an interesting chart for day trading, I think. It looks similar, right? You got the plus sign as your entry. You got your targets. You got your, your, your stop down below. It's totally different than what it just showed you works on different premise. Um, it does use some of the catapult um, tech ideas. This one looks like it's been flung from a catapult, right? So with crude oil, the goal is you want to get to target two. That's your primary objective. So when this sets up, there's a few other trades in here, but this one's unique because it's a setup that I call flip your mama. <laughs> and everyone's like, what do you mean? Flip your mama. What are we learning how to square dance? Um, no, it's, it's, um, these momentum lines, we call them mom lines for short. And when all the colors flip to green or to red, in this case, green and up mom flip, all four lines have flipped and you're on top of this third dot right here, this green dot, these dots, um, by the way, are custom indicators that indicate where there are exhaustion levels in the market where buyers or sellers become tired. So you're, you're lining up an exhaustion level, which, which corroborates your support, and a price action style setup where the price action is kind of dictating the setup. And you're using your, the mom flip, the flip of, of various momentum lines, again, the, the magic ancient feudal Asian rice merchant indicator that works with all my strategies, um, just different ways of using it. And uh, it gives you these really great trades. And so this is one I'm currently day trading and what I'll be doing live next month out of New York. Um, and this is going to be part of the new system that I'm coming up with, coming out with soon. So keep your ears open for that. It's, gonna, it's my best strategy ever, I think. 
at least for day trading. I haven't tried it yet on swing trading. Definitely a lot of cool stuff in this. Uh, this is something that is quite, quite well done. I might take that idea also with the uh, Council of Stage Color for my tools, but it's pretty good. I like this stuff. Uh, now, I think that the next issue people are going to have is like how to find enough trades for this. Because like, they can accept a good equity curve that can make money over time, but then if they don't have any trades like on a day-to-day -day or something, they might get bored of it. So how do you accept kind of taking less trades? And how do you find a sweet spot in terms of numbers of trades to kind of take enough trades and stay profitable? I love that question. Um, so with swing trading, I always talk about building your roster one symbol at a time. And so one symbol obviously won't give you enough trades where you're going to be active. Uh, it depends on the strategy. But with my strategies, you can get anywhere from one to three trades a month on a symbol per symbol, some less. But you could then do another symbol, another symbol, and you can basically, each, each symbol becomes its own trade plan. And you prove it one by one. So you take, the, you take your time and you build it. That's why my mastermind is called the CEO Trader Mastermind. Because the whole concept is you have what we are now, person trying to trade. Unfortunately, people make terrible traders. We're wired to be losing traders, really. So we have to transform. And so we want to become the CEO of our trading business. Person trying to trade, transform into the CEO of your trading business. So you treat your trading like a business. And you build that business slowly. So all businesses take time. Another good metaphor is building a house, right? You have to build a foundation first before you can put the frame up. And ultimately, you put all this work and effort in. But once the house is built, then you just open the door and walk in and you live in it and you enjoy your house, right? So you did the hard work building the house. Now you get to enjoy it and live in it. That's kind of what building a trade plan is or building a, a trading business for yourself is. You build it first. That's where your time and effort goes into. It's worth it because once you have it, it's a goose that lays golden eggs for you. Keeps popping out those golden eggs. So to be active, to answer your question, you just, build, you just get as many symbols as you need until you're as active as you want to be. So if you want to trade every day or if you want to trade a few times a week on average, you, you kind of you just keep building that roster until you get to that point. That's for swing trading. For day trading, I, I um, talk about a technique. It's a, a video I have on my YouTube channel. It's called the three-step sniff test. It's how you assess a chart, determine if it's worth your time and effort, and then you, you then you go through a series of steps to decide if you want to then build a formal trade plan because that takes time and you, you don't want to work on trading, building a plan only to find out it's a dud. That happens. So you want to try to put your, your eggs in a basket first. You want to try to line everything up so that you know when you then put your formal time into creating that trade plan, you're on to something that has high potential. But ultimately, the first step of the sniff test is are there enough trades day to day during the time you want to trade? And I always say, look, you should trade an hour or less a day. If you're trading more than that, I don't even understand why. Who wants a job? Not me. Maybe I'm old. I am old. <laughs> but even if I was young still, wouldn't you rather like go out and live your best life or do you want to be Velcroed working a bad set of hemorrhoids, get, turning your eyeballs into corkscrews? in front of a computer all day long. That's not a lie for me. Yeah, that's my opinion. Some people love it. Um, I love other things. But so the point is, is that are there enough trades during the time you want to trade? Give yourself an hour, maybe two, I don't know. And it's easy to see them, especially if you have a system like mine, because the trades show up right on the chart. You just merely see, oh yeah, there's enough trades. How about yesterday? Yeah, plenty. What about the last 20 sessions? Take you 10 minutes, you look, you see, there's enough trades, all right? The second test and the sniff test, you have to ask, are the trades an appropriate size? If they're too small, they're too noisy, you're going to get whipsawed in and out, pay a lot of trade costs, that's no good. If they're too large, well, for one, you might not have the capital to be able to safely trade it. You should never risk more than 2% of your account on any trade that's part of a proven plan. Most people don't do that. They risk way too much. That's why they end up losing even even a strategy that wins 90 percent of the time is still going to take your money if you over trade right because 10 percent happens and they cluster up you get 10 losses in a row it's still a great strategy still wins 90 percent of the time but the hundred year storm happens the worst session of the month or the worst session of the year is going to happen 
right? Common sense. So if you don't trade with the right size, so I always say, is the trade an appropriate size? That's the second question you would ask. And you could easily see it. Well, again, I don't want to toot my own horn, but with my strategy, it shows in the data window what the risk is and what your rewards are. And you could just look at a bunch of trades and go, okay, gee, there's a $180 risk. It was a $220 risk, it was a, you know, per contract. And you'd find an average, and yeah, it's a, it works for me. Or I could trade micros and pare it down, right? Crude oil futures. So then the third, or e-minis, but then the third question is this. This is the most important one. Once you've determined there's enough trades and they're an appropriate size, the next question is, can I quit with a winning result a vast majority of the time while controlling my trading with efficient, um, well, controlling my drawdown with efficient trading. In other words, can you hit your goals like with the first trade of the day, a large percent of the, of the time, or within five or six trades tops within an hour? Can you do it? So it might take more than an hour on a rare occasion. And then, so we do what's called a fast test. And we line up our trade plan with the rules that we establish, and we go back and we look at the last 100 sessions counting if we would have won that session or lost that session. Chicken scratch counting. One, two, three, four, cross. One, two, three, four, cross. It's called a fast test for a reason. And if you can show that you're going to win in the high 70 plus percent of the time of your sessions or better with some break even sessions too, ultimately the, the com combination is more than 80%. So you're losing 20% or less of your sessions. That means you're going four steps forward, one step back, four steps forward, you know, as a concept. That's a winning business, right? And so that, that fast test then, that's a trade plan that has potential that then we flush out with the next set of tools where we really dig in and uh, build our trade plan. But you see there's a process to getting there. It's a step-by-step -step process. And... Um, I, it often befuddles my mind as to why most traders just skip that part and go straight to the trading. I mean, most people see trading as a business, too. They see it as like a hobby or something you can do easily, like on your own, and like you don't have to work for it. And I think that that's the biggest difference. Yeah. When you've been doing it a long time, you change. Life changes, things change. Eventually, you know, you go through this period of time where where trading was really exciting and you, could, you lost sleep at night because you couldn't wait to get up and trade the next day. You're so excited because you did really well the day before, whatever. And then the market slaps you around and you know, shows you who's really in charge. And you've gone through that a number of times. There's a natural evolution or, or metamorphosis that occurs where you, um, you got to do a gut check because it takes its toll. You know what traders, Young traders don't realize that trading takes its toll. And so you have to think into the future and imagine what your life is like continuing to trade. And most people don't do that either. And that's why I say it's better to have a trade plan where you can get in, get out, get done, hit your goals, turn the computer off and go live your best life. And then just feel happy that at the next cocktail party, someone asks you what you do for a living. You just tell them, hey, I work for seven minutes today. So would you apply the same kind of review process for swing trading or is it a bit different than the day trading? With swing trading, you're obviously you're not counting winning and losing sessions. You're, you're counting winning and losing trades. But I, I use automation more for swing trading, not for trading, but for proving the trade plan and backtesting. I use the automation first. I don't do that with day trading because there are little things we do that 5% art to trading that you could teach people to turn them into rules and mechanical rules, but it's really hard to program. And I don't, and I don't, I never tried to program the 5% art to trading, like adjusting around key levels and adjusting your entry and stop around major support and resistance levels and standing down when a major news event comes out, things like that, that you can't really program in. So for day trading, um, I, my, I use a three-step sniff test and then a uh, pre-programmed spreadsheet with some manual effort. Um, but that's also what you train your, your brain as to how the trade plan, uh, how to live with a win-loss column. Like that's something, again, traders don't think of this. But if you don't train yourself how to live with the random distribution of wins and losses... 
living with a win-loss column as you trade into the future, you're dead. You're, you're going to get qua- squashed. It's just going to happen. The market's going to end up winning um, unless you're just one of those few that succeed. I mean, most people don't succeed. Some do. But in my opinion, you, you really stack the odds in your favor when you start doing these techniques because then you're not relying so much on the whims of the market and your own you know, inherent skill and talent that maybe you have, but maybe you're mistaken it for just, you just had a run of good luck. That's the thing. You never know. Uh, but you could go through these steps to prove it to yourself first. Then you have mechanical rules that you have a foundation and a, um, you, you, you end up believing in what you're doing. And that's what solves the confidence problem. Like on the right edge of the chart, you don't know what's coming next. And remember my, my first trade in the trade room, I didn't quite have the confidence. I didn't learn any of these techniques. I mean, all these things I developed over the years of, of doing. But in those days, no one was there to teach me, and I didn't know any of this. And so the words lean on the system is kind of what started it all and what saved me when that first trade came up, and I almost didn't call it. You know, it's funny. We lost 17 ticks that day. There were uh, on the Russell E. Mini, the ER2 was called in those days. It was $100 a, a point. Now it's $50 a point. Uh, and um, it's the RTY now. In those days, uh, we had 186 people for the first day, and we lost 17 ticks, $170 a contract on our very first day. The system lost it. I called every trade properly. The next day, half the people were gone, never to be heard from again. Gone. One losing day. One. And it was only 17 ticks. And by the end of the year, we were up 50 or 60 points per contract, and uh, that's significant, f- first year. And then on the one-year anniversary, we didn't lose 17 ticks. We made 17 ticks. Like, you couldn't write the script any better. It's like a Disney, you know, script, if you think about it, because it was so ironic. Yeah, so um, the same thing happens today. And in my opinion, by the way, off topic a little bit, that's the problem with alert services and signal services, which I'm fond of. I have my own. But... When you're subscribed to a signal service and someone is telling you what to trade and you're following that person, you better get in when, they, when there's a string of good trades because otherwise you catch some losers, you're going to quit, and then you're going to miss the winners. And the main reason is because you don't really understand what the trade plan or the strategy does. There's a random distribution of wins and losses with all trading, with all trading. It's hard for people to understand that. They always search for perfection. They always try to get that, how do we make it better? How do we win more and more? Well, it's winning enough. It's winning enough to solve your financial problems in life. Isn't that, what, what do you want to mess with that for? Why do you want it to be better? Oh, because you lose a few? It's like you're not trading for the right reasons then, you know? And most people, they, they follow trade signals. There's no way for them to understand the random distribution of wins and losses that that strategy produces. And so they get caught up into it. And as soon as there's a few losses, they're gone. Off chasing the next thing. It's called chasing performance. Um, But anyway, so that's, in my opinion, the inherent problem. Even the best signal services, I I, I would venture to say most people fail with it. And for that reason, not because of the strategy is bad. I mean, he also shows that people expect they'll make money with trading. They don't expect they can lose money for a little bit of time with trading. They expect that because they follow a signal provider or something and they'll make money right away automatically. And that if, you, if they don't, it's because the service is bad or something. So, True. Yeah, expectations are so important. Um, most people expect to make money, but what you should expect is don't expect anything basically be intentional and put your time and effort in the things that you need to do to be successful knowing why you're trading in my opinion is the root of all evils in in other words not knowing why you're trading people think they know why they're trading to make money everyone's going to say some people say because i love it because it's fun because it's exciting all wrong reasons the right reason to make money I mean, the right reason to trade is to make money, but the money is a means to an end. Like, what do you want to do with that money, right? What's your real reason? Freedom, freedom of choice, freedom to live your life however you want. That's my reason. If you have uh, a reason, your reason for trading is to make money, let's just say that because that gives you the opportunity to do whatever you want, then you have to ask the next logical question, and this is where people just fail. 
And the next logical question is, if I'm trading to make money, then what is it that I have to do to succeed, to make money? Well, and the answer is, you need a trade plan that you can prove. If you can prove that the trade plan will make you money, everything follows after that. Then you learn how to execute it. Then you show up and you do it. And then the trade plan makes you money. And then you achieve your reason for trading. It's like, it's such a logical thing that nobody does. And I don't know why. Um... But if you want to be a backpack trader, your own best version of the backpack trader, if you want the freedom that you get from trading, then I highly recommend that you follow those steps because you can give that to yourself. I love that. So where can people find you, connect with you after this podcast and you want to learn more from you and kind of see what you're doing? Well, I, my website is backpacktrader.com. And even better, I love emails. Just send me an email, troy at backpacktrader.com. I answer all emails. Um, as I said, I'd be very happy to give to your guests our, my 12 powers of successful trading. I could even give you a link if you want to post that in the, in the show notes. Um, you, you mind if I plug my book? This is on Amazon, Day Trading Quick Start Guide. It's a top seller. I got a call from this publisher one day out of the blue. I don't know how they found me. And they say, hey, we want you to write a book for us. I'm like, okay, sounds fun. Book Authority, they're an online rating service that they've rated tens of thousands of books, sent me a, a, an email and a badge about two months ago, three months ago, telling me that this book, they consider it one of the top 20 trading books of all time. I was totally floored when I, when I got that. It's actually number seven on the list. And then I have a follow-up, by the way, Forex Quick Start Guide. That day trading quick start guides, the top seller, my follow up for X start guide. Let's get some accolades on that one too. But those are my two books on Amazon. And then, of course, my 12 Powers of Successful Trading is an ebook. It's a free ebook that I will give away to your guests if they uh, would like to have it. I think they'll find a lot of value in it. A lot of the things that I'm talking about with you today are in the ebook. Awesome. I'll actually put these links below in the uh, description of the podcast. I'll put it together directly and, and give those links. Uh, sure, I appreciate your time here. It's been a really good discussion. I really appreciate it. And hopefully we can catch up soon and kind of see how the system evolve and, and talk about trading again.